So I'm going to turn it over to Tom in Chicago. He can walk us through what's been going on. Hey, Tom, what's up, man? Oh, we're hanging in there. Good deal. So um, Kelly uh, sent me a note ahead of time on this call so I could sit down with an expert, which I spent some time with to make sure that um, I was able to serve you guys the best we can. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to hear your story just um, as, as much as you feel that you can share with us, and we'll go from there. Sure. Um, so yeah, thanks for talking with us. So we found out a few weeks ago that a extended relative has been sex, uh, sexually molesting our six year old daughter. Oh, yeah. Um, that person has now been arrested. So our question for you is what, what does the next days, weeks, months, years look like for our daughter and how can we best help her? Oh man. So walk me back. How'd y'all figure, number one, I, I mean, this is every parent's worst nightmare, right? And mm, yeah. I just as the father of a six-year-old girl, my heart's broken for you. And um, I'd hug you if you were sitting here. So just from your city to my city, know that I love you and I'm sorry this happened. Um, geez. So how, how, how did y'all walk with you? How you found out? What's what's happened since then? Yeah, the, the short version was my wife um, observed it in action and observe what was happening. Um, we found out it's been going on for several months and then we involved the authorities at that point. And then good for you. Thank you. Good um, for you, man. So wow. yeah, there, there's been, there has been some negative feedback from other family members on that. Yeah. Well, That's screw them. Number. They don't get a vote. <laughs> yeah. Forget them. If you ever um, doubt that once, just call me and I'll just say, okay. screw them. They don't get a vote. Thank you. The worst. Absolute the worst. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's disgusting. And hey, I hate the fact. Oh, I hate everything about this, man. So um, mm -hmm. did y'all, so your wife witnesses this. Obviously she, I'm assuming she flew into a rage and stopped everything. Um, Not a rage. She pulled the kids out of the situation because uh -huh. um, our younger son was there at the time. It was uh, probably a fairly typical of these sort of situations where they were sitting on a, a chair yeah. and watching a you know perfectly fine video and the person put his hand down inside yeah. uh, her pants. Yep. Um, so she separated them, started talking to people, and our, our daughter, after a little bit, did say, you know, yes, this had been happening. It had been going on for a while. Yeah. And then um, my wife talked to the person who, after lying, did say, yes, it did happen. Um, at that point, my wife moved everyone from the home, the, the family members home, and then um, we came home, or she came home, we talked about it, and we called, involved, involved the authorities at that point. Gotcha. Well, man, I am so proud of y'all for listening to your daughter and believing your daughter. Obviously, your wife saw this, and for calling the police. Um, that already is step one towards healing. Okay. Um, did y'all go through oh, the rigmarole, the forensic interview, the nurse examination? Did y'all go through all that? Yes. Yeah, that happened within a few days afterwards, and then there was no nothing else. Physically, she's fine. Okay. Um, for people who don't know, when you call the police, they'll not they'll normally go to a, a forensic interview where somebody, um, some sort of psychologist or sometimes a detective will. Um, walk through an interview. Sometimes it's done in play therapy. Sometimes it's done in a really not great way, um, just in a in an office with big fluorescent lights, and it's really scary and intimidating for a six year old. But that's when they really dig in and, and get to the bottom of what happened. And then there's often a nurse's examination, which is a really invasive but very important um, physical examination to see if there's any you know any tearing, any 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 sort of physical. Um, uh, issues here, right? Um, and here's what I'll tell you. That feels like you can exhale a tiny bit when those things are over. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want you to underestimate what a huge shape shifter impact that was for your daughter. Okay. Yeah. Those things sometimes come up 15 or 20 years later when she breaks her arm and needs to go to the doctor and she won't go. Or mm -hmm. when she's struggling with anxiety and won't go to talk to a counselor because the whole process feels like it's all wrapped up into this one thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what has been the next steps? Have y'all called somebody? Have y'all started talking to somebody? What, what's been the next steps? Or has it just kind of been a freeze moment? 
Um, a little bit initially with the freeze moment, um, we, you know, just kind of, we had to, uh, yeah, freeze from that point, And then we started talking, we've talked to our pastor and his wife, who've been very helpful, some other close friends. And then we have talked to a couple different counselors okay. who have, you know, been very helpful from, you know, their different points of views. Um, the real thing we've been dialing down on, which our pastor gave us his advice is really just work on connecting with our kids. Okay. Um, you know, not, not specifically our daughter, but both of them. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to be real straightforward here. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm assuming you had a pastor, so you're a person of faith. Yes. All right. So I'm speaking as, um, somebody on your team. I'm a person of faith too. Okay. Not mm-hmm. a big chunk of our listeners aren't. That's fine. I, I want you to hear that I'm not coming at you, but I'm saying this sitting on the pew next to you. Okay. Yep. Um, I'm actually not going to give you the ins and outs of what to do with your daughter. Here's mm-hmm. why. This is not a moment for armchair quarterback in this thing. This isn't a moment for Googling. This is not a moment for pastors. This is not a moment for guidance counselors. This isn't a moment for asking people their quote unquote wisdom. This is a stop the presses, find a trauma focused cognitive behavioral therapist, a TFCBT therapist in your community and work a plan. Okay. And there's plans called seeking safety. There's some really extraordinary processes with a trained professional. Okay. What I don't want you to do is to think we can just do some things and then it will be cool. And we'll just keep checking in with such and such. Your pastor actually gave you some great advice, which is rarely the case these days, unfortunately. Um, mm. You got some great advice. Connection's important, but that is, that's at the periphery, Okay. Sure. That is like if you think of a uh, of somebody who's scuba diving and they need oxygen and then they need the the tank and then they need the boat. Mm-hmm. Your pastor just told you to put gas in the boat, right? It's peripheral sure. to the person at the bottom of the ocean right now. Okay, um, your daughter over time with a with therapist is gonna. Here's what she's gonna relearn. She's gonna relearn what good touch is, what safety feels like, that. A, a despicable evil thing happened to her, but she's not despicable or evil. That somebody committed a great, shameful, evil act against her, but she's not shameful. Her body's not shameful. Sexual intimacy when she's married and down the road is not shameful. And somebody's going to have to walk her through this, and she is six. Okay? Okay. Here's what that looks like. They're going to teach her body to not spin up on her when somebody begins to invade her space. And there's just a process to that. What I'll tell you is on the back end of the process, the healing rate is, is really extraordinary. It's pretty, it's, it's actually, it's unbelievable if you get with the right person. Teaching a six-year-old how to reclaim autonomy of their body after someone has taken it from them, particularly somebody that they trusted, it's just hard, it's just hard. And so, um, I don't want to bad mouth preachers. I don't want to bad mouth people. I'm not doing that. I'm just saying this is one of those moments. You don't try to change the oil in your driveway on this one. You go to a the the dealer mechanic on this one and get the right work sure. done. Okay. Um okay. here's the some people will say, I don't have people in my area. I don't have whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you drive. You figure it out. Um, somebody works, goes to part-time for a year or six months and we drive or we get hotel. I mean, we figure this thing out. This is really hard. Okay. Um, here's the second or third or I don't even know what number we're on here. Um, inside your house, when your kid talks about this, has she brought it up ever? Has it come up? No, um, no. Not really. She's talked about the person who did it, uh-huh. um, and not in the not in a negative context, but more like, "Hey, I'd like to go do this with this person," or they used to do this with me. Yes, like that. Okay, I'm going to tell you some really hard stuff right now. Okay, one of the great evils of sexual abuse with children mm-hmm. is being able to toggle apart, to pull apart. That felt good. With this mm-hmm. was yeah. wrong. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's this. It, it's um, when you the, the first time I heard an eight year old say, 
explain to me how she liked what was happening. Like I, like that was one of the only times I've ever felt close to physically vomiting in a conversation with a kid. It was, it's mm. brutal. Okay. And so, yes, there's going to be this weird, Hey, can I go back and see, because I don't fully grasp the depth of what has happened to me. Right. Right. And so you, here's an important thing I need you to put in your back pocket and your wife and anybody else you trust and love with your kid. Conversations mm-hmm. will come up over time and anything other, you don't, this is not for fixing your kid. You can't fix anything here. What we're looking for is I want you to say, I see you, I hear you. So when it comes up, did you know that this happened to me? Do you remember when so-and-so did so X and Y and Z? The response is not a list of things we've Googled or that we've got from somebody. It, this and it is, I'm so, so sorry that happened to you. That should not have happened to you, and I love you. That's okay. the answer, right? So we're always going with, I see you, and I hear you, and your feelings are valid, and what you remember is valid. I believe you. Not I'm going to fix this right now in this conversation. Because what she's doing now is she's repracticing safety. Who's safe? And the person who tries to dump a bunch of info on her, a bunch of facts and oh, this and this and this into that six-year-old, seven-year-old, nine-year-old, 15-year-old little brain is not safe, okay? Safe is I see you, okay? And here's another heavy one that I see a lot. If you or your wife or your family members break down when this conversation comes up, which it will, or when mm-hmm. she says, hey, I want to go see so-and-so, I want to go see uncle whoever or what, whoever, mm-hmm. and you go... Eat, Either you break down crying or you fly off into rage or whatever the, that, that over-emotion is, what she's going to quickly learn to do is to help you emotionally regulate yourself. And that's not her job. Mm-hmm. Okay? So it, there is feeling sad and there's feeling heartbroken and there's letting her, her know, I choose to be angry about this because that shouldn't have happened to you or what happened to you was wrong and that shouldn't happen. You are too precious and too wonderful and too important and too brilliant and too, too beautiful and too strong. It should never have happened to you. There's a difference between that and just a fit of weeping and rage. And you might have the rage. You might have the weeping. I sure would. Um, I'm going to have my extreme moments with my counselor. Okay, I'm going to have my extreme moments with my group of guys that I meet with on a regular basis. Those guys can handle the weight of my friendship in those moments. A six and nine-year-old can't. What I don't want a nine-year-old doing is, is saying, if I talk about this, it makes daddy really sad. And so I'm just not going to talk about it because I love daddy and I don't want to be the one making him sad. You see how that math works for a kid? Yep. And so it's that balance of you don't want to be a robot. You want him to know, no, this, this made me sad and I'm choosing to have my heart broken here. All those things. And I'm still in control of my body. I'm still in control of my feelings and emotion in this house. Um, here's the last thing I'll ask you. Um, without getting in detail about the family member, how are you, man? Like somebody in your family hurt your kid. Like that's a hard thing to make mm-hmm. peace with. Yeah, I don't, I didn't really have any, I had more of the sadness emotion, just you know, the weight of the situation, not any of the anger or rage. It will come. That, that's the thing. It will okay. come. Okay. Be ready for it because it will come in waves. Okay. Um, have you had a chance? Is this your family member or your wife's family member? Uh, my wife. Um, have you had a chance to talk to the person? Uh, I had a short conversation with them. Uh, an hour or two before they were arrested when they were asking me not to call the police. Okay. And that's been it. Um, I would recommend, of all the things I've just told you, besides seeing your kid, the second most important recommendation is I would make sure you are constantly writing things down that you feel, that you want to say, that come mm-hmm. to mind. I wish I could have this phone call. And they'll come more and more over time. And... Okay. um when you are about to go to sentencing and when the your daughter gets put on a witness stand, which she probably will, uh, all those kind of things, make sure you've got a legacy of writing this stuff out. Here's why. Okay. And your wife too. If you don't, it we call I, I call it leakage. That's a gross counseling word, but it will find its way out. And it usually sure. finds its way out in a real inopportune time that sometimes makes you look foolish or you look like an idiot. Like mm-hmm. you look like the problem when you're not. You're a dad who is beside himself because somebody hurt your baby. You know what I'm saying? 
So mm-hmm. this is constant. I, 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 I would really recommend you and your wife get somebody to talk to because there's going to be the guilt and it was, well, it was your family and I can't believe I missed this. All those things are part of the healing process that the whole family is going to undergo here. And having a, a, mm-hmm. a person that would walk through that with you would be really important. Sure. Um, okay, so I just threw a lot at you. Here's what the next few months is going to look like. You ready? Drum roll. I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. Sure. Um, I know that if you get your daughter into some sort of TFCBT treatment program with a therapist that you trust, that's good. Um, and you and your wife give her, see her and give her space and you are connected with her. Um, mm-hmm. and you let her have her feelings out loud that the chances that she grows up to be well and whole are very, very, very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this will, this will raise hell in her for years and years and years to come. It's the, it's the evil of sexual abuse and trauma. Okay. Sure. It's, it's holding both of those things very loosely, right? Anybody who tries to tell you, well, the next two months is going to be like this is just selling you something. Get away from that person. Okay. Don't take any outside counsel or information and try to impose a framework on how your daughter should be healing right now, how she should be feeling. Her grief is hers and she doesn't even know she's grieving yet. Right. She misses special time with uncle so-and-so. Mm-hmm. And that's so disgusting to even say out loud, but that's the reality of a six-year-old, right? Okay. Um, how's your marriage right now, brother? Um, as good as it's ever been. It's, this is really, it hasn't, it hasn't been, this is not creating any sort of stress between us, thankfully. It's awesome. It's been uh, good. Awesome. The temptation will be y'all have been really tight and having a lot of great conversations and probably going on walks and having moments of what do we do now and all those kind of things that can bring a couple together. Please make sure you put a star on a, on a day on the calendar and y'all continue having these at regular intervals. How are you? How are we? How are we doing? How's things going? Are we going to go out on a date tonight? Are we going to continue to do life? Okay. Right. Please mm-hmm. make sure y'all continue that thing moving forward. Um, and again, yeah. I don't, it's not going to help you. I just need to say it out loud, man. I'm sorry this happened. I'm sorry, man. Thank you. That's... And by the way, call me anytime you need to tell me, you need me to tell you to screw them. Sure. Any family member yeah. that is... There should be a race to the police department. I'm going to call them. No, no, no. I'm calling them. Let's call them together. That's the race. Okay? Anybody... Who tells you, well, I don't, I just don't think we should press charges or um, are we sure? Anybody who says that is done. Sure. Got it? Yep. And that might be really hard. It might be your wife's parents. That might be her other siblings. And they are opting out of your life if they, if they make those suggestions. Okay. Okay. I've got no quarter for that nonsense. It should be a group of people rallying around. A um, hurting six-year-old little girl, not trying to protect an, a scumbag. Ugh, gosh, man, somebody who's got a lot of challenges. Anything I can help you else with, brother? I feel like I talked at you a lot. Anything I can help with, man? No, I think that, uh, that has been very helpful to give us a pathway to what we should be doing and be in touch with the right counselors. Okay. Um, if you need something, man, please, I'll walk with you through this. Um, holler at me if you need anything. Um, and just so for the general public, we are talking about creating some training for pastors and what they say when someone drops us on because they just don't have that training. And how, what, what would we say to people who are just helpful friends and neighbors and go-to folks in communities? What do you do? What do you say when, some, when a child drops us on you or when a parent comes to you? Um, what do you say or do when somebody in your family comes to you and says, hey, I think one of our family members is abusing children? What do you do at that point? Um, so we may come out with some trainings there. Um, if you have interest in that, holler at me because I think we're going to need to get on that. There's just too much hurt going on and too many people hurting kids. And then people, the follow-up, the, the care that happens right after, that's just a mess, man. Thank you so much, Tom, for being brave and for having the hard conversation and big shout out to you and your wife for staying connected during the season and for loving that six-year-old little girl.